George Saad is voorganger van een kerk in Beirut, Libanon. Toen de vluchtelingen de Libanese grens overkwamen, heeft hij hen met zijn kerk verwelkomd. Ze hebben duizenden vluchtelingen geholpen. Ze hoorden hun verhalen, deelden hun pijn en beleefden samen hun dagelijkse problemen. Nu vormen de vluchtelingen de meerderheid van de gemeenschap. George heeft een groot verlangen om gerechtigheid te brengen en vindt het geruststellend mensen te ontmoeten die ook geloven in een wereld zonder onrecht. George deelt vandaag over zijn leven in Libanon. Do you have uh, a toy? Can we put the image please? This was the question these two little siblings asked me while I was distributing food on the borders with Syria. I heard this tiny little voice. Do you have a toy? And I looked and I was shocked. I didn't want to say no, I don't have a toy. So I told these two little siblings, I said, I will bring you a toy. And I was ready to leave and my friend took this picture and I look rear in the mirror and, and they stopped me again and they said, do you promise? I said, I promise, I'll bring you a toy. I'll come back. I left went to Beirut, and in a couple of days, this place where these two little girls live were bombed, and the roads were closed. So I couldn't go back for a couple of weeks. And when the roads were open again, I took toys, and I went back to these little girls, and I tried to find them, but I couldn't find them. I had the toys, but I didn't find the girls. I searched everywhere, I asked people, and nobody knew where they, they were. And I was so upset. And I made a promise to myself, I would never miss a chance, I would never miss an opportunity to help. I will never say tomorrow I will. I will just take immediate action. I left back to Beirut and we start immediately arranging and sending missions to the borders with Syria on, on, on basis, like regular basis, sending food, sending blankets, mattresses, we opened our doors, the church doors. We received 2,000 families, and we start helping these families. And we could see, we could see, I mean, those families, we lived with those families. We shared their pain, their stories, their breaking heart, heart stories. And, you know, while doing all this, and you have to look always strong to these people, to help these people, even though you hear the most heartbreaking stories. And then after serving and serving and serving, I mean, since the first day that the, the war started, we're serving and we're helping in this, uh, these brothers and sisters. And then one day, I cried to the Lord, I said, Lord, I cannot take this anymore. I'm frustrated. And you know, you have to look in front of the people strong. But between you and God alone, you can share your weakness with God. So I cried and I said, Lord, I cannot take this anymore. And it was that day that the Lord spoke to my heart what I would like to share with you not only with you. I would like to share this with the secular world, the public opinion, the political. I would like to share this with this nation. That one day I was praying and I said, Lord, I'm frustrated, I cannot do this work an anymore. It's too much for me. And then the Lord spoke to my heart about Joseph of Arimathea.
Can we have the picture for, of the cross, please? The Aramithian called. If I came to the Netherlands to just speak about the Aramithian call, that would be enough for me. What is an Aramithian call? Well, I was praying and I was really frustrating. The Lord spoke to my heart and he said, what did Joseph do? And said, Joseph went and asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. And he said, do you think that I mentioned all of that just because he asked for the body of Jesus? And then the Lord starts speaking to my heart. And I start seeing like a video in front of me. I saw Joseph going to the cross with Nicodemus, putting the ladder, climbing the ladder, and start removing the nails from the body that was on the cross. While he was removing the nails, I could see and he was feeling the flesh, he was feeling the bones of the person who loved most. He used to be a secret disciple for Jesus. He used to be rich, but he didn't share his faith. But now he was doing something prophetic. He went and he climbed and he was removing the nail from Jesus hand and feeling the bones and then when he removed the nails the first arm fell on Joseph and then he reached the second hand and he was removing the nail from his hand and again he's feeling the flesh and the bones and remove it and now half of the body of on Joseph and he removed from his feet and now Joseph is lifting the dead body he's feeling the weight of the dead body and the Lord spoke to my heart are you willing to feel the weight of my dead body the church in the Middle East is on the cross the church in the Middle East is nailed on the cross and I believe everywhere in the world we need to bring justice for the body of Christ because the body of Christ is the only solution for the crisis that is happening. There is no acceptable solution. We can help here, we can help there, but there is no acceptable solution, but the answer is with the body of Christ. My message today is to this nation, to everyone is hearing. Let's bring Justice to the body of Christ. Let's remove the nails from the body, from the church. Let's have a ministry removing the nails. You know, everybody wanted to serve the living Jesus. Everybody wanted to serve the big Jesus, the strong Jesus, the giver, the healer. But nobody was willing to serve a dead body. What can you have in return serving a dead body? Like the, the Marys, they went and they didn't have anything in return. They took more and spices, you know, for the body. They gain nothing in return. You look everywhere and you see that everybody wants the benefits of Christianity, the benefits of Jesus. When he was alive, everybody wanted him. When he was on the cross, nobody wanted him. But a person that was willing to feel the weight of a dead body. My call today for you, for this nation, for the world, for the secular world, for the politicians, if you want to see a change, let's remove the nails from the church. If we want to see the resurrection, we need to remove the body from the cross. What Joseph did was prophetic. The body of Jesus shouldn't be on the cross. The body of Jesus must resurrect. And he found this man for this time to remove his body from the cross so he could resurrect from the dead. I'm happy today. I didn't know that before. 
and I wasn't planning to share what I will share right now. We have here today someone with us. I won't mention his name for security reasons. Uh, he, he, he surprised me by coming now. I didn't know he was coming. Uh, he used to be a refugee in my church. And uh, he came to the church with his family. And he's sitting now here. He lived in the third floor while our church is in the fourth floor. So one day I was praying, one night I was praying, and the Lord spoke to my heart and said, go early in the morning, take two blankets, two mattresses, and go to this person, knock his door, and give him the two mattresses and two blankets, and say nothing. So I went, and he is non-Christian, he's, not, he's a Muslim. So I went, and I knocked his room, and he opened and I gave him the two mattresses and two blankets. And then he was shocked. His wife came. She was shocked. And then she, he told her, tell him. So she started telling me that my husband was praying for a long time. And we never received an answer. Yesterday, for the very first time, my husband prayed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, if you are the living God, as this pastor is saying on the fourth floor, well, I need two mattresses and two blankets because I've been sleeping on the floor with my family. I'm going to try you, Jesus. You have your chance till tomorrow morning. Somebody has to come and give me two blankets and two mattresses. And here is me knocking his door, giving him two blankets and two mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> it was Wednesday so Friday night we had the, the meeting the service and I was preaching and he came toward me <laughs> and he said give me this microphone I said what are you doing he said give me the microphone <laughs> so we were fighting against the microphone he took finally the microphone and he stood in front of everybody and he said I used to be non-Christian. <laughs> Today, I claim my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because He is the living God and He hears our prayers. Can we put the picture the, in the church? The picture in the church. That night, I gave the altar call. This is our church, a part of our church. All the present were non-Christians. 100% of the people that were there gave their life to Jesus. They, you're seeing here, lifting their hands. You see that they are non-Christians. These people are non-Christians, but they became Christians. Everybody gave their life to Jesus that night. And this is what we are seeing in every meeting we have. Thousands getting, getting saved. Thousands getting saved. They come, non-Christians, they get discipled in our church and they come here as Christians. I will end with this. We need to remove the nails from the dead body. We need to lift the dead body to feel the weight. My question is for you and for this nation, for everybody who's hearing, who is willing to feel the weight of a dead body so we can feel and we can see their resurrection. Thank you.